Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to BizTalk 59. Nice to see you all again. I see some regular faces. Thank you for joining me today. And in advance, I wish you all a very happy new year. And I wish you all happiness in 2023. Let's start talking about today's topic, BizTalk 59. So let's start by looking at it. Difficult people usually cause conflict. Unfortunately, it's a reality of life that conflict is inevitable. In any relationship, whether it's with customers, boyfriend, husband, wife, ex-wife, ex-husband, co-workers, or other persons, conflict happens in any relationship where there's supposed to be collaboration. And it can be seen as collaborative instead of adversarial. Well, yes, it can. It is a must in order for you to be able to avoid conflict, to be able to craft conversations or understand how to enter a conversation to ensure that anybody you're conversing with, whether it's a customer, co-workers or anyone else, people or family, hear you, acknowledge you and you acknowledge their concerns. It is really important to know how to lay out all the sides of an issue and all the facts to put all parties on the same page. Only then, when you're able to deliver a message clearly, concisely, and transparently, can you avoid conflict. But in most situations, conflict is, is inevitable. It's very hard for people to survive their life without conflict. Some would say that life without conflict is a problem because conflict is part of human nature. Let's look at seven of the most relevant traits of somebody who wants to be difficult or is focused on conflict. The first trait, as we call it, is closeness. And this is when somebody is insensitive and this person has a cruel disregard for the other person they're communicating with or the other people they're communicating with. Usually, if somebody's insensitive, usually the people he or she is communicating with would feel unsafe, they would feel offended, and they would become defensive. It can be annoying for people to constantly be callous if it psychologically wounds the receiver. Sadly, callousness always ends in psychological wounds. Just think about it. I'm sure many of you, when you went to school, you were picked on. Would anybody agree with me? How many would agree that when you went to school, somebody picked on you? Can you wave your hands? Anybody, wave your hand. Okay, let's start with the first hand that went up. Amal, tell us. Amal, were you picked on at school? Hi, Amal. Hi. Hello, sir. Yes. Hi, were, were uh, you picked on at school? Yes, sir. Uh, and, I was bullied. And when you were bullied, did that leave an emotional mark in, your, in the way you felt? Yes, sir. I felt sad. Okay, fantastic. Hopefully today you learn how to deal with those people because I'm sure as you go through life, even after school, conflict and difficult people that practice being callous or callousness is typical in today's society. It's not yes, because sir. they want to do it. It's because they don't know how to stop doing it. Do you understand what I'm saying, Amal? Yes, sir. Good on you, mate. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Does anybody else want to share an example of feeling psychologically hurt or suffering from emotional damage as a result of somebody being insensitive. Can anybody else share an experience with me? Who else wants to share an experience? Can you wave your hand to me? Wave your hand, everyone. Okay, let's talk to Alexandre. Hi, Alexandre. Good to see you again. Go ahead, my friend. Tell me about a Hello, sir. example. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, most of that uh, physical emotion was there when uh, the uh, head of project tells that he needs something 
uh, this evening uh, for tomorrow uh, meeting or something like this, we spent whole nights working, make this project. And at the evening, he just came and say, oh, I don't care about it, don't care. So something like this. So even he don't say thank you very much for your work or something like this. So how did you feel about that? Were you hurt? Uh, no, it demotivated me for the job in this company. Very demotivated. And All right. So but if you were if you were on the receiving end after you'd worked on this project for weeks, then he said he doesn't care. It's not important. Yeah. Would you be offended? Would you be hurt? Well, sure, I don't care about this project. So it's uh, very bad for me for future. Okay, thank you. All right, that's a good example. Thank you. All right, let's go on. So callousness basically is when somebody is insensitive. Insensitive could be a remark regarding your effort, your look, your color, your race, your religion, or simply the way you behave, or simply some generic insensitive words which are aimed at simply focusing on hurting your emotions. For example, oh, don't be silly. You know that you're not qualified to do this job. Or I told you several times, don't make decisions. I make the decisions for you. You're just a secretary. Or you're just an immature teenager. Do the job and don't ask questions. These are common comments that sometimes people use in order to actually make you feel less important. They're comments used to intimidate, and they're just an example. So now you know what I mean being by being insensitive. Everybody goes through it. Think about how you are sometimes insensitive or not sensitive to your partner's feelings, to your supervisor's feelings, to the feelings of your work colleagues. Let's go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Okay, the second one is what we call grandiosity. Grandiosity is a very common word. It involves one of the parties being being or behaving with an unrealistic sense of superiority over others. For example, like I just said to you, where they think they're better than you and tell you that you're only a trainee, that you're not important, it doesn't matter whether you come to work or not, and what you say carries no weight. Or your boyfriend telling you the only reason he's going out with you is because he doesn't have another girlfriend. Or your husband telling you he doesn't love you, he loves another woman, but he's just staying with you because of, because of the children. They're trying to show you that they feel superior to you and they're trying to call emotional hurt. They're calling on the tool to cause you emotional hurt and cause conflict. Grandiosity or grandiose tendencies do not usually point to a healthy relationship or healthy self-esteem, but rather an assertion of superiority. Somebody is telling you that they feel that they're better than you or that you are not as good as them. In which a person could, could also say, I'm special because, you know, I was born in Romania, so I'm better than you because you were born in Africa. Those sorts of elements or tendency towards grandiosity are quite common. Grandiosity is also a trait that is a hallmark of narcissism. You all know what narcissism means, and it can fracture relationships and harm one's well being. People have given up careers, people have broken relationships because of what we call grandiose behavior or grandiosity. Grandiosity is one of the most common elements when there is basically a difficult customer. It is one of the most common elements that cause tension.
Bear with me for a moment. Okay, sorry, this should be hostility. So number three is hostility. Somebody being hostile, violent, or forceful, or forceful behavior can all be linked to aggressiveness. And this, again, is part of somebody trying to show that they're better than you, trying to control the discussion or control the relationship. For example, a customer who thinks that he's right and you're wrong, and that even though he has not met the conditions for a refund, or even though he damaged the goods, even though he deliberately bought the wrong size, because he's a customer, he tries to use forceful, hostile, um, loud voice, arrogant voice in order to show superiority, to offend you, to make you feel less important so that he gets his or her way. Those who practice aggression often do not seek to get along. They're basically after an outcome. It could be a financial advantage. It could be an advantage where they've won because they don't want to lose. It could be that they don't want to seek harmony. They don't care about a relationship and they don't care about dealing with people in a peaceful and win-win situation. A good example of when aggressiveness might be appropriate and when it could backfire. For example, as a lecturer, I could argue with people in my field and be disagreeable without a lot of trouble or costs because what I'm doing is arguing a point based on academic reason and I give evidence or facts to support it. However, if I was to do that in my private life with my wife or family members or with my boss in the office, that would be something that would be considered pervasive and it would be closer to something that would definitely impact the conversation and the relationship and it would be considered a problem. So let me stop sharing. Does everybody understand by what I mean with the word grandiosity and, hos and being hostile, hostility? Does everybody understand grandiosity and hostility? Yes or no? Can you wave your hands to me, please? Come on. Does everybody know what I mean by hostility, Daisy? Not April yet. Do you know what I mean by hostility? Okay, good. All right, let's talk to someone else. Um, can anybody else give me an example of when they may have experienced hostility or grandiosity with a customer or a work colleague? Can anybody give me an example? Who would like to share an example with me? Could you wave your hands to me? Anyone? I can't see any hands moving. Is everybody awake today or are we already drunk because of New Year? All right. Okay. Um, Alexandre. Okay. Um, let's talk to Alexandre first. Hi, Alexandre. Tell me, share with me an experience. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, I've uh, asked the phone. Is uh, experience of what, sir? I have a lot of experience, a lot of uh, problem uh, clients, a lot of the problem situation. Which one would you like? I, I will Just share. Give me one which is most relevant to hostility. Uh, hostility. Uh, how do she? Uh, when a uh, customer came here, uh, came to me, and uh, he feels like he is like a king or something like this, and looks from high okay. on up. Okay, but you find that the person was hostile simply because they wanted to get their own way. Would that be? Is that correct? Because they only wanted to win. They didn't care about being fair or transparent, yeah. all they cared about yeah. is them winning. Am I right or wrong? Yes, yes, sir. Yes or no. Right. And it's very common, especially between a customer and service provider, or a customer and their bank, or a customer and a retailer, okay? Especially when you're going B2C, business to consumer, or even business to business. Hostility is very common so that the customer gets their way. So they take a hostile approach because they believe that if they become aggressive, they become loud, or they become hostile, they'll always yeah. get their own way. And they you agree think with that, that Alexandre? 
Yes, sir. I fully agree with you. And they think that uh, they know more than you and you are nothing. Right. So absolutely. They are speaking from this way and you are trying to keep it calm, keep it down. And no, sir, look, you are trying to show him example, trying to prove something. But in 80 percent, it doesn't work. Exactly right. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, we'll talk again. Um, who else would like to share an example with me? Ivana? Hi, Ivana. Would you like to share an example with me? Go ahead. Hello, Ivana. Good afternoon. Go Hi. ahead. Good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Um, Good afternoon. I would like to share. Uh, I have a customer. Yeah. He is very tantrum. Uh, sometimes when we are talking about uh, we are in meeting, sometimes we all throw the glass. Sometimes we also throw away, uh, throw like just like throw the document to the other like this because of the. Sorry, you mean to? He box. picks up a glass and throws a glass. Is that what you said? Yes. Yes. Right. Sometimes well, it's very handful. Yeah, but you have yeah. to be very careful because one day he may throw it and hurt someone, and that will become yeah. a crime. It will become assault. So that is going beyond yeah. just acceptable hostility. It's basically assault. Yeah. So that's something you should be very careful of in case one day he points the glass at you. Can I ask, what, what yeah. work do you do? What sort of business is it? Uh, I work in a shipping company. A shipping company. And the customer throws yeah. a glass at you. Is that right? Uh, no, he throws the glass on the wall. Just like, uh, because he is uh, my boss, his best friend. Sometimes yeah. he, he's looking just like very tantrum or sometimes get angry. We don't know. What where he agree about what? So Sometimes they throw they a glass. Throw the yeah. <laughs> okay, you better be careful yeah. with that because that can become serious, <laughs> especially if he hurts someone with the glass. All right. So yeah. I want to warn yeah. you to always, when you get into a confrontation with a with your superior, with a customer, or with an employee, a work, a coworker, or another worker, and if they go to a stage of hostility where they're throwing glasses you should walk away from the situation. Do not try to change it because that becomes very serious assault and that's going beyond the normal norms of aggressiveness. Do you understand that, Ivana? Yes or no? I can't hear you. Okay, good. Yeah. Excellent. All right, let's talk to one more. Hi, Mayroll. Tell me, what's your example? Go ahead, Mayroll. Are you there, Mayroll? Go ahead, Mayroll. Mayroll, Ann, Pino, would you like to talk to me or not? Yes, yes, can you hear me? Yeah, go yes. ahead, tell me, what's your example? I was going to ask, before I have an experience when I was working with a big shop. And yes. Working with a big shop. And if I was calling a customer, okay. he wants to buy a bread. I okay. How many, how many and how much he yes. says? He says three pieces just because it's long, so I didn't, I didn't, uh, I was confused before about his, his accent. So right. I, I asked him to, to say that, I, I asked, I will repeat what he, what he did, ordered, and then I said, so he says three pieces. Right, okay. and then he loves yes, yes. Right. And okay. then I give him a credit pieces of bread, and then he asked me how much is it. So it is it, because it costs twenty and two pesos piece. And then I I told to her to him it's forty pesos. Forty right. pesos. So and what he, do you? Why do you think? Why do you think the customer was doing this? What was his reason for doing this? Can you tell me? What was the Doing this. That, uh, I do, I, because I, I don't get, honestly, I don't get what you want, but he just got angry that I told him that it's total 40 pesos, and then he said, I just, I said 20 pesos, 50 pesos, 50 pesos, he got angry like that, and then at okay. that time, I don't know what I'm going to say. Okay, well, you see, what the reason the customer was becoming hostile simply because even though he knew that it was truly an extra 20 pesos, he simply didn't want to pay it. So the easiest way to you to end that is to make a decision whether you give him the 20 peso discount 
or just to say, sorry, I can't help you. Okay. But this is something that people use usually to get a discount or get their way. Thank you for sharing that, Mayroll. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Let's go on. Okay. Let's look at the next slide, please. Okay. So as I said, hostility. Let's go to the next one. The next one is suspicion. Does everybody know what I mean by suspicion? Suspicion means not believing in someone, not trusting in so someone, not trusting your customer, always treating your customer as dishonest, even though you have no proof. Suspicion can cause hostility. Suspicion can cause friction. Suspicion can give a customer reason to be difficult. And what is suspicion? It's simply by someone suspecting that something is wrong without proof or evidence. There are instances when it could be helpful to be cautious with one's trust, but when suspicious tendencies spiral out of control, issues such as persuadiveness, okay, um, and conspiracies may arise and be of harm to others, okay? So what we're saying here is sometimes it's okay to be slightly suspicious, but by being over suspicious, you're basically preventing the way or the path for a smooth relationship. Everybody has suspicion. It's common with girls when they suspect that their boyfriends are double crossing them or dating two girlfriends. It's normal. But sometimes women can become too suspicious. They can become suspicious for the wrong reason because they watched uh, Soapy on television and saw um, women um, catching their boyfriends cheating on television. So they usually picture that and assimilate it to their boyfriend. Most of the times they're right. Sometimes they're wrong. Is suspicion good? To a certain extent, yes. But too much suspicion can end up harming the relationship or harming the discussion. Let's talk about suspicion. Suspicion is good because as Amal will tell you and others will tell you, if you're not suspicious sometimes and you don't ask the right questions, people can take advantage of you, whether it's in doing business or whether it's in a personal relationship. Today, more than ever, people get attracted to working online and doing business online. And sometimes if you believe in what this other party is telling you and it sounds so good, the benefits they're offering you, you do the work and then they tell you, hold on, I didn't agree to pay you. You have to invest in my business before you can earn any money. Why? Because you had not done your checking or your due diligence by asking the right questions. So it is very important to have a certain level of suspicion and to always question everything, especially today more than ever. Do you understand what I'm saying, Amal? Can you unmute your microphone? Do you understand yes, what I said? Yes, so, sir. Amal, always don't take the facts that people present to you and trust them because they look so good. Usually, if somebody presents you a glossy package, you always should have a certain level of suspicion and ask them to show you evidence before you uh, agree. Sir? Uh, sir, can I yes. share my experience with you? Um, if you'd like to share it with everyone here, that's okay. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, yeah, okay, sir. Go uh, ahead. It's, it's just that uh, yeah, recently, like before in the in like few days back in, in a week, I was like, I was like, you know, I looked for a job and in that job, I had to do some PDF uh, conversion. And after I completed the work, he first said to me, I would not take any investment. But so I agreed that I would do the job. But then after I done all his work, he made a fake uh, bank account for me in Australia. 
and which was not real. And he also tried to take money from me. So could you accept that maybe you did not ask enough questions? Would that uh, be you accept some of the blame? That maybe no, you did I, not I do due questions. diligence? All right, but maybe no, you I didn't ask questions. enough questions. Yeah, you no, didn't I ask enough them. questions, right? Yeah. Did you ask yes, somebody sir. in Australia to check him out? Did you get references? Did you go and search this person's no, name? I searched the I searched the bank's uh, website. The bank's website, but what about his company website? That too. Okay, all right. But I want you to be more suspicious next time, Amal. Ask yes, more sir. questions. Give me names of people who work for you that can give you a reference. Okay, yes, where is your company registered? How many clients do you have? All right, you need yes, to sir. ask more. Sometimes being over suspicious can cut you out. You can't do business, but you need to have a certain level of suspicion in order to avoid being taken advantage of. Do you understand me, young lady? Yes, sir. Good girl. All right, does everybody understand what I've explained so far? Yeah, can you wave your hands if you understand what I've said? Great. Excellent. Just give me a minute, would you? Let me go back to my PowerPoint. All right. So we've covered suspicion. Let's now go to the next part. Just bear with me. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. The next slide is what we call manipulativeness, being manipulative. Everybody knows what being manipulative is. Little kids try to manipulate their parents to get toys or get their way. Come on, when you were at school, you used to wake up in the morning and say, Mommy, I got a headache and start crying because you didn't want to go to school. You were being manipulative. When one often attempts to influence the behavior or emotion of another person for their own purpose, they are considered manipulative. Being manipulative is being dishonest. When manipulation is used as a trait, to bypass reason, to deceive, to pressure, to get your own way, or to do as the influencer wishes, it is problematic and considered antagonistic. Because if you are always trying to manipulate, eventually people will not want to talk to you and you will always be in a confrontational position and you will always have difficult customers because they believe you're trying to manipulate them or they try to manipulate you because the last time it worked and they think they'll get their own way. Manipulation is dishonesty. Manipulation is truly an attempt to deceive or put pressure on someone. The next one is dominance. Dominance is very much what we spoke about before, having power and trying to influence others by trying to show that you're better than them or you have more power than them. For example, I'm a loyal customer. I spent thousands of dollars with your company. How dare you charge me extra? Why don't you give me a discount? Dominance can be used altruistically, and if it is, it's usually a dominant personality and it can also be very extreme antagonism and therefore be difficult to get along with, especially if people always raise their voice to try to enforce their dominance. Sometimes it makes it very difficult to the other person or persons to move forward. For example, Dealing with a dominant personality can be a challenging feat if your boss who's not well versed in emotional intelligence. If your boss always yells and reminds you, I'm the boss, just do your job. You don't have a choice because he says, I'm the boss. If you don't do it my way, there's the door, leave. Obviously, if you need your job, then it's very hard for you to accept it, but you have no choice. So therefore, it becomes antagonism. He does it because he wants to antagonize you and scare you. Taking risk. 
Amal took risk, but her risk was not a calculated risk. She did not ask the right questions. And I know that Amal has learned from her lesson. And next time Amal makes a decision, hopefully she'll ask for help before she says yes to any such great offer from any fraudster or illegitimate yes, person sir. in another part of the world. Thank you, Amal. A willingness to take risk in the hope that of a desired result, you might consider yourself a risk taker. Amal, psychologically, forgive me using you as an example, Amal, if I'm allowed to, please. So what happens is Amal wanted a job so desperately. She wanted to do well. She wanted to prove that she's becoming a junior entrepreneur. And I'm so proud of her for wanting to do that. Okay. She's gone from being a little schoolgirl to a very intelligent teenager, to a young lady who's studying for a better education and wants to become an entrepreneur and be very successful. I commend her for that. But because she was so, so hungry to do that, she was prepared to take certain risks. No one goes into business without being a risk taker. But the element is how much risk should you take? And that's where Amal failed. There are myriads of benefits to risk taking. But if one does not consider how their impulsive actions may affect those around them or may be of danger to themselves, then they do not know how much risk to take and how serious the risk is and which risk is worth taking without putting themselves into financial um, liquidation or into physical danger or emotional danger or being taken advantage of. Risk-taking can swiftly become destructive and chaotically difficult. People like Amal are very strong-minded. She has very strong willpower and she will try again and she will succeed. I will do everything I can to coach her. But if it wasn't somebody like Amal who has a strong mindset, they could basically be turned away and not have the confidence to take risk moving forward in their life. So remember, if you consider yourself a risk taker, you have to know what level of risk to take, what is your comfort zone, and what sort of risk is okay and what sort of risk is not okay? I want you all to think about this before we go on. The greatest stress one goes through when dealing with a difficult person, whether a customer, supervisor, or work colleague, is not fueled by the words or the actions of this person. It is fueled by one's mindset that gives their words and actions importance. All right, let's go back to our previous slides. We said here that difficult people, what are their traits? Their traits are their mindset and their thinking that they want to show that they're insensitive and therefore reflect an insensitive attitude. Number two, they want to show that they're better than you and they want to be show that they're grandiose and they like to show off and show that they're more superior to you or your senior, even though that they're not. They want to be hostile, violent or forceful or behave in a way to scare you, which is aggressive in order for you to agree with them. They want to show that they don't trust you in order for you to feel that you need to do what they want in order for them to trust you. They try to be manipulative to twist your arm and make you agree with them. Like Amal's case, the guy manipulated her, told her that he had a bank account in Australia, which turned out to be false in order to get his way. But she was smart enough to pick it up. And now she's probably going to ask 20 more questions every time somebody says, you want to work for me online because of this person's behavior. Dominance, as I said, 
people try to use their power to influence you. And sometimes that power can go too far. But sometimes you need to understand that, you know, your mother or father could have a dominant personality. A father giving his daughter instructions or yelling or scolding his daughter for not doing what she's told or coming home late. Sometimes fathers have a dominant personality. Is that okay? Well, to dad, it's okay because he cares about his princess, his Barbie doll, his daughter. But when does it become over-dominance? When he goes too far, for example, locks his daughter in her bedroom for a month or doesn't allow her to go out or talk to anyone, then his over-influence of dominance can cause harm to others and be, can definitely become antagonism, which can lead to psychological um, discomfort, psychological problems, emotional problems for the child in the way they look to their father or they respect the person who's becoming over-dominant. Again, what we've said about risk-taking, it's the way they evaluate risk, which again is their psychological aptitude to risk. So the greatest stress one goes through when dealing with a difficult person, whether a customer, a supervisor, or a work colleague, is not fueled by the words or actions of this person. It is fueled by one's mindset that gives their words and actions importance. Let's talk about that. Do all of you agree with that statement that I just made? Does everybody agree what I, with what I just said? Ivana, do you agree with what I said? Wave your hand, Ivana. Do you agree with what I just said, Amal? Wave your hand, Amal. Jasmine, do you understand what I said, Jasmine? Wave your hand, young Jasmine. You, you look like you're asleep today. Wave your hand. Wake up, young lady. Daisy, are you awake today? Do you understand what I just said, young lady? Beautiful smile, Daisy. I'm not. April Mient, do you understand what I just said? Nant, can you wave your hand? Wave your hand, don't shake your head. Smile, Nant, I haven't seen your beautiful smile today. Good girl, excellent, thank you. All right, good. Um, Amira, do you understand what I just said, Amira, with your fan? Yes or no, Amira? Good girl, wave your hand, Amira, don't shake your head. Monkeys shake their head. People wave their hands or use their mouth, young lady. That's part of professional behavior. Never shake your head unless the person is with you in the room. Always use your mouth or your hand. All right, Amira. Good girl. Thank you, Amira. Um, who else have I got here that's not talking to me today? Spencer, where are you, Spencer? You're on my list. Hello, Spencer. Do you understand what I just said, Spencer? Good man, Spencer. Thank you. Anasur, do you understand what I just said? Wave your hand, Anasur. Wake up, young man. Okay. Um, Abdul Rahman, do you understand what I just said? Wave your hand, Abdul Rahman. Don't shake your head like a monkey. Wave your hand. Always wave your hand. Monkeys shake their head. Okay. Uh, Meron, do you understand Mr. Meron and your blue top? Thank you, Mr. Meron. Leiram, Moana, can you switch off your poster and look at me and wave your hand? Thank you, Mr. Moana. Do you understand what I said? Yes. Good man, thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna give you a simple example, ladies, and I use this commonly. If you go to a hairdressing salon and you say to the hairdresser, this is the style you want. And then when you're finished, it's not what you wanted. Is it gonna do or solve the problem by you becoming aggressive? No. By you being confrontational, is it going to get anywhere? No. By you being manipulative, is it going to get you a result? No. So the damage has already been done. So therefore, the only solution for you as a customer is to never go back to that outlet. But is it worth getting upset, confrontational, manipulative, coercive? Is it worth that? No. Because what will you do? You'll embarrass yourself through no fault of your own. It's because a dumbass hairdresser did not listen to your instructions. Am I right or wrong? Can you wave your hands? Okay. So the best punishment you could serve to that 
hairdresser is not to return to his shop. The best punishment you could serve is to go to Facebook and put a review to tell people not to go there. But it's no point you getting angry because even if you get angry and become a difficult and hostile customer, it's not going to change anything. It's just going to cause you embarrassment. Does everybody understand that? Yes or no? Yes or no, everyone? Come on, I want to see 200 hands, not 50 hands. Wave your hands. Okay, good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Thank you. All right, let's go on. All right, do you understand what I just said, Lydia? Good girl, Lydia. Um, Cecile, do you understand what I just said, Cecile? Wake up, Cecile. Sit up with your beautiful face. I want to see you with your beautiful long hair, beautiful smile and lipstick. Sit up, Cecile, so you can learn something. Stop laying on the bed and being a lazy bum. Look at the camera, Cecile. Okay, Cecile, can you give me an example of when you've dealt with a difficult teacher, a difficult boss, or a difficult customer? Un unmute your microphone, Cecile. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Cecile. Are you there? Can you unmute your microphone? Unmute your microphone. Yes or no? Hi, Cecile. Good afternoon, sir. Tell me about a, 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 an example of when you've had to deal with a difficult customer, a difficult boss, a difficult supervisor, or a difficult person. Can you give me one example, please? Uh, when the employer is like uh, finding something trouble for you, <laughs> like uh, he's, uh, uh, I mean, she, uh, they really. Uh, um, what, they're really trying sorry, to, sorry. they're trying to tell you that I'm the boss, you do as I say. Is that what you're no, saying? I mean, that, uh, they don't, uh, what is, uh, how to say, um, not enough for them that you really do. So, they're, ne so but, they're never satisfied, right? Yes. They always want to show that they're grandiose. Yes. Grandiosity is their thing. They're always better than you and they always want more. Am I right? Yes. yes okay. Sir. Right. Okay. So what do you do? How do you react to that? How do you react to that? uh i try to explain but and then i will tell them that if uh you are not satisfied then you teach me how to do it that's a very good approach but when you do that you don't get angry right because if you get angry and hostile they will react with hostility do you understand that yes sir all right, good girl. Good example. Please wake up. Stop laying down. I want to see you smile so you can learn. Do you understand that, young lady? Get it, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, conflict and conflict resolution, whether it's with a customer, with a company, or with your boss, is basically something you can deal with. It's a science. Ladies, when you bake a chocolate cake, do you all know how to bake a chocolate cake? How many times do I use the chocolate cake scenario? Amira, do you bake chocolate cake, Amira? Wave your hand, Amira. All right. So, Amira, just like baking a chocolate cake, dealing with difficult customers, you need to understand the traits. I just gave you seven traits. Everybody, have you written down the seven traits? Yes or no? Everybody wrote it down or took a picture? Good stuff. Excellent. Nice to see you, Omar. Good to see you again, Omar. Okay. All right. Let's go on. Okay. So what we just said before, guys, is very true. Let's look at more on dealing with these difficult people whether they're customers, supervisors, work colleagues, or just people in your life. Let's look at the elements that we need to focus on when dealing with these people. Let's look at the basic four or five ingredients, just like the core ingredients of a chocolate cake. One is integrity. Two is responsibility. Three is forgiveness. And four is compassion. Just bear with me for a minute, will you? All right. 
So let me talk to you about these four before I go down. Let's talk about the heart first. Forgiveness comes from your heart. Compassion comes from your heart. Integrity is from your mind. So is responsibility. Let's talk about integrity. How do you show integrity? You have to be consistent with the principle and values and belief. Okay. And you have to practice or walk what you talk. You always have to tell the truth and you should stand up for what is right for you and for the other party. You should never try to be in a win-lose situation. You should always try to make sure that both parties are in a win-win situation. And you should always keep your promises. That will get you trust. And that comes from your head, the way you think, and the way you behave. The other one on the top horizontal line, okay, you get responsibility. The other core is responsibility. What are the ingredients of responsibilities? What are the competencies you need to be responsible? Taking responsibility for your choices, Amal, you should accept. When Wally says, Amal, you didn't ask questions, you don't behave like a little girl and say, I did. It's obvious that you didn't, Amal, because if you had done so, you would have never wasted time doing the work that he never paid you for. You would have at least said to Wally, Wally, I've been offered this job. How do I check it out? You're a student. I'm here to help you. But you did not accept responsibility for your mistake. But I'm happy that now you have and you're learning from that. Part of responsibility is admitting mistakes and failures. And Amal, you have done that. Embracing responsibility and accepting that you have an obligation to others and that you want to do the right thing to leave the world a better place means that you bring inspiration to yourself and to the people you're communicating with. Look at the man that developed the toilet. How many of you go to the toilet every day? How many of you go to the toilet every day at least once? Wave your hands. Wave your hands, everyone. Okay. So you go to the toilet every day, thanks to the genius who once developed a toilet seat, who was trying to leave the world as a better place. Does everybody say that? Would everybody agree with that? The man who developed the toilet seat was trying to inspire a better solution for the world. He was trying to create a better world by solving the problem and giving people a better way to dispose their waste. Would you all agree with that? Yes or no? Yes or no? Wave your hands if it's yes. Wake up, everyone. Manolin, where are you, Manolin? Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so the first one we said is trust. The second one is inspiration. Now let's go to the bottom line. So the first two are things that are controlled from your head and your mindset and your brain. The emotional nerve center of your brain controls your integrity and sense of responsibility. Let's go to the bottom of the table. Forgiveness comes from your heart. The ability to let go of one's mistakes is forgiveness. The ability to let go of others' mistakes is forgiveness. Even though you let go, it doesn't mean you forget. And if you can forgive, it shows that you're open to innovation and improvement. And it shows the person you're communicating with him or her that you're open to innovation and moving forward in that relationship or discussion. The other one that comes from the heart is compassion. You have to show that you care, not only for yourself, but for the other party you're communicating with, your customer or your boss or the company you work for. What will compassion get you? It will get you retention. 
What do I mean by retention? You keep your job or your business is successful because you retain the customer. Does everybody understand what I mean by integrity, responsibility, forgiveness, and compassion? Does everybody understand what I mean by those? Yes or no? Evelyn, wave your hand, Evelyn. Wake up, Evelyn. Okay, everyone. Okay. So remember the example I gave you before. If Evelyn goes to a new hairdresser today and Evelyn says, I got a new boyfriend and I want a sexy new hairstyle for my new boyfriend, but I want my hair to stay shoulder length and I want a color that guys love. I don't care. You decide. You're the expert. Now, Evelyn felt compassionate. She felt that she's going to let this young hairdresser do whatever he wants. She showed trust because she let she told him, I'll let you decide. Okay. She showed that she is after innovation because she respected him. He's the professional and let him do what he thinks is good for her. Now, if I was in Evelyn's shoes and I had a new boyfriend, I would probably do the same if I was a girl, right? Okay. Now, Evelyn went through this exercise and then at the end, she didn't like the color. So what can Evelyn do? There's two things she can do. She can get up and smack the guy across the face and then he'll call the police. Two, she can tell him to change the color, okay? And he can say, but you told me to choose the color. Why should I change the color? You have to pay. Or three, she can be realistic and say, you know what? I should have chosen the color. I will learn to love this color and I'll go and see what my boyfriend says. Okay. Now, when she goes to her boyfriend and her boyfriend says, wow, you look so sexy today. I want you to always look like that. Evelyn can then say to herself, maybe I was wrong to say to the hairstylist that I don't like it. Maybe I should call and let him know my boyfriend liked it. Maybe I should send him a message saying thank you. But if Evelyn wanted to be really arrogant, she would just simply not apologize to that hairdresser. And next time Evelyn goes back to that salon, if she ever does, do you think that hairdresser will care about Evelyn? No, because she already abused him. Why? Because she was being selfish. She was not reflecting on the four elements that I showed you. The four elements that are controlled by her brain, which is the brain, your emotional control center, and the two elements that come from your heart. Do you understand that, Evelyn? Yes or no, Evelyn? Smile, Evelyn. Good girl, Evelyn. All right. Does everybody understand my example, Lydia? Lydia, Lorica, do you understand? Good girl, Lydia. Focus on me, Lydia, not on the desk. Okay, good. Do you understand it, Eddie? You understand the example, Eddie? All right, good. Okay, let's go on, guys. So I want you to take a picture of this slide if you haven't already. I want you to take a picture of this slide. Take a picture if you haven't already taken one. And I want you to use this as reference every time you try to deal with conflict or with a hostile customer. In actual fact, remember, trust, inspiration, okay? Innovation and retention should be ingredients that you practice every day in your life. Please take a picture. All right, let's look at the core components of compassion. Remember we said here, compassion? Compassion is about actively caring for others. But what are the core ingredients that make compassion powerful? Empathy, feeling as somebody else is feeling, however uncomfortable. Two, being conjugative, seeking to understand what somebody else is thinking and why they came to hold their opinion, okay? Which means that you need to listen. So Evelyn should have asked the stylist, why did you make it so pink? And he might say, 
because young guys love girls with pink hair. They remember how sexy Madonna was and will think of you like Madonna and will want more of you. But if you're not conjugative and you don't try to understand and simply say, you screwed up, then you're not showing any compassion. And the third element of compassion or component of compassion is motivation. Trying to take care of the concerns of others and reduce their suffering by communicating with compassion, by doing it with compassion. Does everybody understand what I'm saying, guys? Yes or no? Does everybody understand that? Where are you, Evelyn? On your microphone, Evelyn. Yes, yes. Do you understand the elements of compassion now, <laughs> Evelyn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you use those every day when you communicate with people or are you going to start using them from today? Uh, I, I've been using most of the, the elements because uh, I, once I communicate with people, I always uh, consider the, their feelings. I, I always ask opinion so that uh, I'm very careful with my, my words to other people because uh, I cannot take back what is uh, I was I was saying I, I don't want to hurt anybody. I was very considerate. So I was hoping please. you would say four important words. As Evelyn said, sometimes she might say something which can never be taken back and she would damage yes, that yes. relationship forever. Am I right, Evelyn? Yes, yes. Thank you for pointing that out to everyone else. Thank you, Evelyn. Keep keep Thank there, you, Evelyn. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, okay. Sir, thank you. All right, let's go back. Is there anybody else that would like to ask any questions about anything that I've just said? Anybody else? No? Um, Alicia, Aisha, why are you putting your hand up there and looking so stressed, Aisha? Talk to me, Aisha. Good evening. Where are you, where are you from today? Hi, Aisha. What country are you in? Open your microphone, Aisha. Hello. Are you there? You want to open your microphone or not? I can't hear you, ma'am. You're muted. Can you unmute your microphone? Unmute your microphone. Yes, sir. Yes. Hi, Asa. Where are you from? Are you in the Philippines or where? Yes, sir. I am I am from Philippines, but you... right now I'm in uh, UAE. Okay. Do you understand what I've just explained, Asa? Do you understand what I'm trying to teach you? Yes, sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. All right. Aisha, I know you work in the UAE and working for families in the UAE, sometimes it becomes very frustrating. Do you think that the family or the people you work with show compassion or do you think they could learn more about compassion? Yes, sir. All right. And I hope you now understand what is compassion and maybe you can work towards showing them more compassion or trying to teach them how to be compassionate. All right. All right, sir. Thank you, Asa. Keep on studying hard, Asa. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Thank right, you very much. Sir. You're welcome, ma'am. Let's go back to my PowerPoint. All right, guys, let's go on. Just bear with me. I'm not sure why this keeps coming up. All right, let's go back. Okay. All right. So what I want to do now, we focused on the traits. We focused on compassion. We focused on the four important quadrants or ingredients and what the results of those are. Integrity brings you trust. Responsibility brings you inspiration. Forgiveness brings innovation. Compassion brings retention. Now let's go to the next part. Let's look at conflict resolution strategies. And they are different types of strategies. We have cooperative strategies. We have assertive strategies, we have unassertive strategies, and we have uncooperative strategies. Accommodating is cooperative. Okay. Let's look at assertive. Assertive is collaborating. Unassert uncooperative is competing. And unassertive is avoiding. If you avoid, it means you're not assertive. You don't ask 
and you don't play a role in the decision. You just avoid it and walk away. Competing is uncooperative because you want to win. You don't want a win-win situation. You want a win-lose situation. Accommodating is cooperative because you're working towards a win-win situation. Collaborating is more assertive because you're basically putting down the reasons and justifying them in order to collaborate. And I'll explain more about that shortly. Let's talk about accommodating. An accommodating style is commonly seen when people want to be unassertive and cooperative. Not every conflict needs to be a war. Conflicts worth accommodating are those battles that are strategically lost to win the war. So sometimes it's better for you to go into a shop if you get what you want, you're happy. If you don't get what you want, you simply don't buy it. Or if you bought it because it was your mistake, you walk away, you don't go back to that shop. An example of a time where you might accommodate a colleague or customer is when they complain about a process or a service, but not an outcome. Perhaps you ran a report that yield, yielded results that one of your colleagues in the office need but you produce the report in PDF form and not in Excel. The other person did not tell you to produce it in Excel, so you produced it in PDF. So instead of getting angry by simply going back and saving it again in Excel and sending it to them, all right, or asking the other person to in future tell you what format they want it in, that would help you to be accommodating in future. So by simply accommodating the request, you'll prove to be helpful, solution-oriented. You'll prove to your boss and to the people you work with that you're a team player. And you'll get bonus points if you deliver the correct report quickly, even though you sent it in PDF. And five minutes later, you send it again in Excel, saying, please, in future, let me know if you want it in Excel. That will make you definitely accommodating. And that will definitely make you someone who is cooperative. Let's talk about avoiding. An avoiding conflict strategy is commonly reserved for individuals who are more inclined to be unassertive and uncooperative in mitigating conflict. This is an apathetic approach. People who adopt this strategy want no parts of the conflict and would rather then would rather walk away or wait till it blows over or go to another shop. So it's example, Evelyn. She went to a hairdresser and she did not get the style she wanted. Instead of arguing the fact that she told him he could do whatever he wants, it would be better for her to avoid and walk away and simply not go back. That may be a strategy that she could choose, which would avoid conflict. An example of a conflict you might avoid in the workplace is when someone drinks the last of the water in the water cooler or in the fridge without replacing the water. If it's a one-time issue, let it be. It's likely not worth the two-minute discussion in all the hands meeting Okay, what do I mean by that? It's not worth calling all hands in the office, all people in the office and say, hey, who drank the last bottle of water? Because that will cause resentment. It's better for you to avoid it and just go and buy more water. Collaborating. The collaborating style is when you want to satisfy both sides. All right, it is highly assertive because you try to show them your reason and convince them. And you try to listen to what they have to say and try to come to a common agreement. That's being collaborating. The goal is to find a win-win solution. Appropriate uses of collaborating style to sort out a problem includes integrating solutions, learning, merging ideas, 
talking about ideas and gaining commitment that both of you will learn from ideas in order to improve your relationship and make it better. If you want to keep a relationship intact and find a solution that works for everyone, the collaborative style of conflict resolution is definitely the most successful one. This strategy is both cooperative and assertive, which means that all parties will be heard and the solution that is chosen should work for everybody because it's collaborative, it's assertive, okay? It's not defensive, it's not avoiding. It shows that you have real intention, that you have trust and they trust you, that you have innovation and you're ready to do business or build on that relationship. An example of a conflict you might collaborate on at work is a process between two separate teams. Perhaps the sales team in your company needs to hand off customers to the support customer service team once the deal is closed, but customers aren't being contacted by support for days after the handoff. The two teams may collaborate to streamline the workflow. So the sales team might may stagger the deals they close so that support can keep up with the demand. That way, it's a win-win situation for both parties. Uh, Mr. Govan, somebody's drawing on my screen. Can you fix it now, Govan? Somebody is drawing on my screen. Thank you. So if you collaborate, basically you avoid conflict. You might go to the sales manager and say, listen, I'm the service manager, but you need to help me come up with a system so we know how many sales have been closed so we can schedule to call all customers and not delay. But if you don't discuss it with the sales manager and if the customer service manager works on her own and the sales manager works on their own and there's no collaboration, no discussion, no exchange of ideas, then you will fail. Competing. The competing style is when you stress your position without considering the opposing points of view. This style is highly assertive with minimal cooperativeness. The goal is to win. Assertive and uncooperative, the competing conflict style is an intense approach to resolving grievances. It's not something that you want to do over a haircut that went wrong. Evelyn, because you gave the wrong instructions. It's not uncommon for a competing conflict resolution strategy to yield a positive outcome for one party and a negative outcome for the other. Because if it's a competing resolution or a competing style, there will be one winner, one loser. This strategy is not one that you would use if you wanted to become a repeat customer with your boyfriend or with someone who you want to communicate with again. You might see a competing conflict management strategy used when negotiating deals. For example, a lawyer may use this strategy to get the best legal outcome for their client at the expense of the other party because the lawyer is only going to talk to the other party once and he wants to get the best result for his customer who's facing um, the death penalty if he gets convicted of trafficking drugs. So the lawyer needs to fight really hard, even though he may be competing with the truth in order to save his client's life. A competing strategy works here because it's highly unlikely that the lawyer will cross paths with the other party again. So there's no relationship to maintain or salvage later. So competing could be the right method or style to use in such an instance. The next one is compromising. Compromising is the intermediate status quo in both assertiveness and cooperativeness. In this mode, you try to find an acceptable solution that only partially satisfies both concerns conflicts without attempting to satisfy either individual's concerns. So it's something in the middle. 
you both go halfway or you both try to agree on something which may be 50% the way you want it, 50% the way they want it. People tend to compromise during conflicts when they are assertive and cooperative. Remember, not only assertive, but also cooperative. The strategy may sound harsh, but it's usually employed when the time is of the essence and there's no time to hear everybody's concerns or opinions. The compromise is based on the most important and urgent facts that can bring about a decision that works for the time being, compromising. A team might compromise on a solution to cancel an event at the last minute due to issues with the venue. So if we arrange a dinner and because of COVID-19, the hotel will not allow everyone to gather in the ballroom and have dinner sitting at tables, then the team organizing the dinner from your office and from the hotel would agree to cancel the dinner and to postpone it till after COVID-19. Well, sometimes we might not want to do that because it would delay revenue or prolong um, an open business that you want to close. It will help the situation. So a compromise to cancel the dinner because the hotel would be breaking the law and everybody who goes is in the danger of being infected with COVID-19, okay, would be the right decision to move forward. And compromise sometimes is something that employees do with their staff or compromise is something that usually you might do with a customer who wants goods that you don't have but you give him another type of good at a lower price to compensate for the fact that you don't have enough stock. Compromise. It's better than losing a customer. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, conflicts can emerge from several different factors, including miscommunication, not, pro not prioritizing or a lack of prioritization, and unempt expectations. Let's talk about three different scenario examples that depict each of these common causes for conflict and how to resolve them with one of the strategies listed. Let's talk about the first scenario. Before we do that, I want you to remember two things. I want you to remember that competing and avoiding require you to be assertive. Competing requires a high level of assertiveness, Avoiding requires a lower level of assertiveness. Let's look at, sorry. Okay. Um, I made a mistake there. I do apologize. Okay. Competing and avoiding. As I said, competing requires a higher level of assertiveness. Avoiding requires a lower level level of assertiveness all right let's look at cooperativeness avoiding requires a lower element of cooperativeness accommodating requires a higher element of cooperativeness if you are accommodating you're being cooperative if you're being avoiding you're not being cooperative if you're being avoiding you're not being assertive if you're being competing you're being assertive if you're being collaborative, if you're uh, in a collabor collaborating attitude or using a collaborating style, then you're both being cooperative and assertive to a, a, a certain extent. All right. Now, compromising is in the middle because with compromise, you have to give and take, which means being cooperative. And you have to be assertive to a level. But usually the level of assertiveness and compromise has to be equal from both sides in order for you to reach a compromise. Does everybody understand what I mean? Avoiding has a lower level of assertiveness required. Competing requires a higher level of assertiveness. Collaborating requires high assertiveness and high cooperation. And that means it requires more cooperativeness. Therefore, accommodating is to be cooperative, 
accommodating is where to make the, ha the um, situation happen to make the conflict go away. So when you're collaborating, you need to be assertive. When you're collaborating, you also need to be accommodating and give way. And you also want to make sure that you listen and agree and exchange ideas. So cooperative, assertive. Does everybody understand what I mean by assertive and collaborative? Yes or no, Lydia? Okay, all right. Does everybody understand what I just explained? You sure? Okay. Okay, let's go on. All right, let's look at the first scenario. I'll read it to you and then we'll talk about it. Unmet expectations. Marcus and Ollie work at TechTac, -Tech, a startup that provides marketing and sales solutions to small businesses. They're working on a pitch for a presentation for their biggest clients to date. Their client is Save and Spend. The presentation is scheduled for next Thursday with Maria, the program director at Save Send. So it's important that Marcus and Ollie finish it on time. On Tuesday, before the presentation date, Riley sent an email to check the status of the presentation and how well the two teams were working together. Unfortunately, Ollie hadn't received any content from Marcus's team to design the presentation. Okay. All right. On the other hand, Marcus hadn't received creative direction or the recommended presentation length from Ollie so his team could write enough content. Okay, so if Marcus's team hadn't received any content to design the presentation around and Marcus had not received any creative direction on the length of the presentation or the color or the feel, we have a problem. With Tuesday's deadline approaching and no presentation draft in sight, Ollie and Marcus are both frustrated and anxious to complete the project on time. How should both teams resolve this conflict? Who can tell me? All right, let's start at the top. Where are we? Let's start with, um, where is he? Alexander, where are you? Alexander, what, what approach do you think they should use to solve scenario one go ahead uh they should collaborate together and uh, maybe okay. explain um, to me what explain to me what do you mean by collaborate and how would that help them uh they need to uh, get other opinion they need to exchange other. opinion from each other right from each other and also get together other opinion and to think about how it's on third man they need to call the client and get more information, right? Yeah, sure. Thank collected you. Collected more information, collected more uh, opinion from others. And after this, see it, calm down and decide what to Thank do. Thank you, Alexander. Good one. Let's ask Amal, who's too busy playing with her fingers, to tell me what number two is. What's the second method you could use, Amal? Uh, sir, uh, what's the question? I just explained scenario one. Did you understand scenario one? Did you understand uh, no, what sir. they were doing? No, sir. Amal, please focus. All right, sweetheart. You need to learn. Sorry, all right? sir. Focus. Yes, sir. I will call on you through scenario two. All right? Okay, Thank sir. You. All right. Can anybody else tell me what is another element in scenario one? Um, okay, let's talk to Omul Banan. Hello, Omul Banan. Hi. Open your microphone. Go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah. To you, mister. Yeah. If there are others. Um, as I think they should put time for that and they should dedicate a lot of time for that because that's important for them and they don't have much time. So they have to dedicate more time for that and work more on that. So they so have to help them have a good program. So they need to be compromising and collaborative, right? They need to have a yeah. compromising attitude, make time for each other, and they need to yeah. collaborate, as Alexandre said. Would you agree on that? Yeah, yeah. Good on yes. you. Good girl. Thank you very much. All right. I'll talk to you again. Okay. Um, who else wants to share? 
Amy, would you like to share? How would you solve the problem? Go ahead, Amy. Um, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir. Hello, good afternoon. Yeah, how would you solve so, the problem? For me, it's really need to be have a compromising or communications. Because right. if they have the communications, they don't have to respond. Yes. So they don't have a problem. Because if you really get your communication with each other within your group, we will solve all your problems and you're not going to have it. Right. You're right. Thank you very much, Amy. Very good answer. Thank you, young lady. You're learning. Good girl. Thank you, mate. Okay. All right. So let's go to scenario, back to scenario number one, and let's look at how they resolve their problem. Okay. Let's go through it. Let's look at the facts. Time is of the essence, as all three of you just said, and delaying the presentation isn't an option. Both Ollie and Marcus need more information to complete their assigned tasks. The line of communication has been opened by a third party, Riley. Let's look at the solution. Based on what we know about the conflict resolution strategy, the collaborative style would work best for this situation. Marcus and Ollie are under a time crunch and the work will need to be done in the next two days. They can use Riley as a neutral third party to help them online or in person to outline the specification of the project and assign strict deadlines that both parties can agree on. So basically it's collaboration and giving compromising through collaboration or collaborating and compromising towards each other so that you can both reach the objective and complete the project with Riley's help. Better communication. Okay, let's look at scenario two. Amal, focus. Out of order. Brenda and Candice both work as an administr administrative assistance for the local credit union Metro Money in Manila. Their roles are highly dependent upon one another. And as a result, they've become good friends both at work and in their personal lives. At Metro Money, Brenda focuses on scheduling appointments for new members to open accounts, while Candace prepares the documents they'll need to sign when they arrive. Due to the nature of the business, Brenda's workflow moves much faster than Candace's. Why? because Brenda schedules appointments, but Candace has to prepare all the work. Brenda can schedule about 10 appointments each day, each day while Candace can only prepare about five document packages a day during her eight or nine hour shift. Occasionally, some customers' documents aren't prepared at the time of their appointment as Candace prepares documents in the order that appointments are set not the date which they're scheduled. On this particular day, Brenda asked Candace to expedite its documents for two customers who were set to arrive soon. Candace responded that she couldn't because her, um, because her can, sorry, let me just go through that again. On this particular day, Brenda asked Candace to expedite the documents for two customers who were set to arrive soon. Candace responded that she couldn't, okay? Because that means that if she did that, Candace would be doing the work out of the normal order because Candace did the work in the order she received them, not in the order of who's coming when and what time. Instead, she asked Brenda to reschedule the customer's appointments for a week later when their documents would be ready. How can Brenda and Candace work together to make sure the customers will have their documents when they arrive at their appointment? Okay, who can tell me? What is the solution to this one? All right, Amal, don't tell me you didn't listen to this one, Amal. I'm going to get really angry at you, young lady, if you don't know the answer. Tell me, Amal, how do you think they can work together? Go ahead. Collaboration. Okay, give us some examples. Good girl. Give me some examples. Uh, if they if they collaborate with the with the customer, uh, and do you think they need uh, to collaborate with the customer, or you think the receptionist needs to collaborate with Candace? 
I'm Candace, coming to Candace. Alexander. Hold on. Um, so you think should is it a clever okay so it's nothing to do with the customer right so yeah, the no. problem lies within the organization would you agree yes, with sir. that Emma? yes Good. Sir. okay yes, sir. all right i'll explain more shortly does anybody else want to add to that who would like to add to that alexander you want to add to that go ahead go ahead alexander so sir in my cases where, when i have the experience of it so we uh trying to help to each other so if i finish my job uh so you're saying you're saying it should be compromised not collaborate right uh what, what are you oh, saying me so i'm saying so if i finish my job soon okay. as my uh, uh all right okay all right, but let's, to help to but let's focus on the problem. Let's focus on the problem. Is the problem with the customer or is it internal? It's well, problem internal for okay, managed, good. All right. management. Okay, good. Okay, I'll come so back to you. To yeah, go on. Okay, good man. Thanks, Alexander. Very good. Very good. Okay, we're thinking. You're all thinking. I'm so proud of you all. Thank you, Alexander. Okay, let's go to the next person that put their hand up. Um, Who is it? Lydia? No, Lydia put her hand down. Ah, uh, Meron. Hi, Meron. How? What would you say about this situation, Meron? Go ahead, Meron. Okay, thank you, How? sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay, the situation will be solved by accommodating. So you think accommodating Candice should accommodate Brenda? Is that right? Have a... Yeah. Yeah. That's so all right. So okay. Brenda, because all we right. have. Cooperate maybe, but not uh, be assertive. All right, because that's a good have... idea. You're right. Now you're on the right track. Yeah. So you're saying that Candice should be more accommodating because Candice was doing the wrong, the work in the wrong order and not in taking. She wasn't looking at the date and time, so she should but... try to accommodate. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. All right. It. Okay. Thank you for your input. All right. Let me go uh, on. Let's look at the real problem and the real positive solution. Okay. Okay, the problem here is Brenda and Candice both have goals to achieve. Brenda has to get appointments. Candice has to finish the preparation of paperwork. Neither of them can be ignored because Candice needs Brenda to set appointments. Brenda needs Candice to prepare the paperwork. Timing is important, but there is some wiggle room for both parties to work within. If the customer's documents aren't ready, they won't be able to open their accounts, which affects the bottom line for both Brenda and Candice because they both have KPIs. The resolution. We know that Brenda and Candice have a strong relationship and some leeway in solving the issue so they could collaborate to solve the conflict. By asserting their needs and cooperating with each other, Brenda can reschedule the customer's appointments for the end of the week rather than next week as Candice originally proposed. And Candice can reorganize her workload to prioritize the documents so they're done in order of first appointment or first in, first served. That means Candice would check the appointments to find out who is coming in next and give that paperwork priority. If the customer is coming in next week, no need to do the paperwork today. You do the customers that are coming tomorrow today. The benefit of collaborating, collaboration or collaborating on this resolution is that both Brenda and Candice can maintain their otherwise seamless working relationship without any hard feelings later on. So it's exactly what we said. They need to cooperate and that means collaboration. And for them to collaborate, they both have to compromise and understand each other in order to be able to make way and make it happen. Okay, let's look at scenario three. Again, Amal, you're paying attention. Sadie is applying for a role as a customer service representative at Humboldt Hardware a hardware subscription service for do-it-yourself home renovators. Jim, the hiring manager, scheduled her for interview on Wednesday at noon and Sadie agreed to arrive at that time. 
On Wednesday, Sadie logged into Zoom for her interview with Jim, but 10 minutes passed and he didn't show up or respond to her email asking if he could still make it. An hour later, Jim responds to Sadie's email saying he's online ready for the interview. Sadie was unavailable and didn't see the email until later that evening. When she responded, they both realized they were operating in two different time zones and neither of them confirmed which one. Jim, unfortunately, doesn't have any openings available to reschedule the interview tomorrow and Sadie is frustrated with the process thus far. How should Sadie and Jim proceed? Okay, can I get somebody else to help me with this? Somebody who has not raised their hand before. Come on, Amira, can you help Amira? What would you do, Amira? Go ahead, Amira. I'm coming to you, Amy. Hold on. Yes, Amira. How do you think you would solve this problem, Amira? Um, you should, uh, Jim should in frame, uh, in frame that uh, about a, a situation that that he's not on time during during his schedule for the interview, so that the and the interviewer would. Uh, understand or right. okay so what you're saying yeah. when jim when jim made the appointment he should have communicated which time zone he was in and made it clear to the interviewee what time they had yeah. to be online is that right yeah okay good thank you for that okay let's talk to amy amy what would you suggest unmute your microphone amy go ahead no, yeah what um, do you suggest First, they have two of them. They have a mistake. First of all, the uh, applicant, one, he needs to be a responsible because he is the one who's looking for a job. And then the interviewer, he doesn't know where the the, um, the applicant came from. So they need a really good communication. They need to have the the um, real communications, not just talk, not just the schedule. So you, think that, so you think that their communication wasn't effective, is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. This is why the communication is effective. They're not going to have this problem. They're not going to encounter this problem because from the first place, they schedule their time. They have a specific time and they know where they're located. Okay, thank so you for that. Thanks, Amy. Problem. Thanks, Amy. Okay, good. Who else wants to contribute? Yes, Rosie, go ahead, Rosie. Go are you there, Rosie? Yes, sir. Yeah, I tell me, what would you, where's the problem? Um, it should be an, have an open communication for both. So you, and, okay, both. so you suggest that it was a lack of communication, right? They should have open communication for okay. both applicant and for the interviewer. All right, okay. Thank you for your input. Okay, that's fine. Let's go. Who else has raised their hand? Alexander again? Yes, Alexander, what is your... Have, What's your input? Uh, no, say I just want to ask to you. Can you share this PowerPoint document with us? Because I didn't uh, follow. It. Okay, what if you could drop me a message later? I can send it to you by WhatsApp it's tomorrow. Disabled, chat. chat is huh? disabled. Chat is disabled here. Uh, uh, okay, um, I'm not sure why my host has done that. I will no, don't do it here. Send it to me later by WhatsApp. Do you have my WhatsApp number? Okay. Yeah, you yeah, have yeah, my yeah, WhatsApp. Sure. Just WhatsApp yeah. me and say, hi, I'm Alexander. I want the presentation, all right? Thank you but, much, um, just to make it easier for you, by Tuesday this week, the video of today's lesson will be BizTalk59 available on our YouTube channel, which is the Apex Stories. So you can see it there as well. But if you want, the, you PD, if you want the PDF presentation, yeah. like all of you do, yeah. drop me a WhatsApp message to my WhatsApp number. Say BizTalk59, the name yeah. of the BizTalk, can I have the PDF? I will send it to you within three days. I promise. You, All right. Sir. Thank you Thank so you, much. Sir. All right. Okay. Let's go on. Um, about, uh, this yes. Problem. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, this problem. So they have to arrange these times, uh, arrange how to work together. Okay. So to tell me. Work. So tell me what mode of what we've learned today do you think they should apply to solve the problem? Uh, to more speak with, the, uh, with each other, to respect each other. So would that be collaboration? Would it be compromise? Would it be avoidance? What would it yes. be? Both. Well, hold on, hold on. Is it avoidance? It's not avoidance. So either collaboration or 
not, not uh, uh, it must be accommodating and uh, accommodating so they would have yeah, to be accommodating okay that's yeah, a possibility okay all right thank you for that okay does anybody else want to add to that does anybody else want to add to that Does anybody want to add to that? Okay, who wants to add to that? Go on. Um, let's talk to. Okay, hold on. Yeah. Um. Okay. Omuben. Omubenen. Go ahead. Unmute your microphone. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Hello again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name is Omulbanin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Omulbanin. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fine. Omulbanin, Thank you. Yes. Omulbanin. Okay. okay. Uh, so as we have learned the skill today, she has to observe the dignity. She has to observe the dignity of herself that she needs the job and the dignity Good idea. of the uh, yeah. apply the factory that he she applied for that she has to observe the rule of dignity that today so she should have not she should have checked the time and the country is that what you're saying yeah, yes. very good yeah, yeah, yeah. very good excellent go on one more mm -hmm. anything else uh, that's that that's that forgive me for mispronouncing your name I'm sorry I'll make sure I get it right, <laughs> no, right. Just forgive me ma'am yeah, yeah. Okay, My name is you. a little bit hard. <laughs> uh, let me yeah. try again. Omul Banan, right? Yeah, Omul Banin. <laughs> Omul Banin. Okay, good. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, Thank yeah. you, ma'am. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. My humble apologies. <laughs> no, no, just Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, let's go on. I can talk to one more person and then we'll go on. Yeah, uh, Binatay. Hi, Binatay. What do you want to add? Go ahead. Uh, I think it's collaboration. They should collaborate and fix the okay. issue. All right, good. Thanks. Uh, and those of all that don't have your WhatsApp number, maybe you can drop it in the chat. So um, can... My co host will share it with you shortly. All right. Um, my admin oh, okay. co host will share with you shortly. All right. Okay. All right. So let's go on and have an, a, a look at the outcome. Okay. Let's go on. So how should Sadie and Jim proceed? Let's look at the facts. Sadie is applying for a role and is willing to be flexible to secure the job with Humboldt Hardware, but she still wants to make the most of her time during the interview process. Jim's schedule is busy and he has several interviews scheduled aside from Sadie. Neither Sadie nor Jim intended to miscommunicate the time of the interview and both made an effort to show up at the time they thought was correct. Let's look at the solution. The accommodating conflict resolution strategy, accommodating, is the most applicable to the situation. The bright side is both individuals have some motivation to accommodate the other person. Sadie wants to put her best foot forward and be a standout candidate for the role. Jim wants to vet all candidates and fairness to all applicants for the role as quickly as possible. So as long as both parties communicate, collaborate, compromise, and give way to help both parties find the right time in the right time zone suitable for both of them, this should solve the problem and avoid conflict and should lead to an amicable and amicable and productive solution for Sadie to get the interview, possibly get the job, and for um, Jim to make sure he interviews everybody for the job. Because if he doesn't interview Sadie, he could be missing one of the best applicants who had applied. So accommodating would be the principal or the best conflict resolution strategy in this um, particular scenario. So let's look at accommodating. Remember what we said on the table before, accommodating, accommodating requires both cooperation and assertiveness, right? Accommodating requires both cooperation, okay? It requires cooperation and it requires a level of assertiveness. But if you are uncooperative, then you can't be accommodating. And if you lack any assertiveness and zero assertiveness, you will not be accommodating. You would just be avoiding. 
So accommodating definitely requires more cooperativeness, but it also requires some minimal assertiveness, whereby avoiding doesn't require any assertiveness. It doesn't require any cooperativeness. It basically, you're unassertive and there's nothing you want to do. So therefore, you're not cooperating at all. In competing, you're uncooperative because you want to win and the other party to lose. If you're collaborating or compromising or accommodating, they would be win-win situations whereby competing is a win-lose situation, avoiding you walk away, one party's lost. All right, so. Let's think about this. And this is a famous uh, model that we use. And this is drawn by um, a professor in the field, Thomas Kilman, on conflict resolution. He says that competing focuses on getting your perspective accepted, you and them. Collaborating is when you come together to develop a mutually beneficial solution to both you and them. Avoiding is when you take a step back from the conflict and let it play out and both of you lose out. Accommodating is you accept the perspective of the other party and try to reach a reasonable um, situation where you agree to it and accommodate them. Does everybody understand that? Remember, if you're competing, you really want the upper hand. So you will have more advantage than them. If you're collaborating, you both have equal win. If you're ex accommodating, you probably will have to give away something to meet their requirements. So they will have more win. You will have a lower amount of win. You will probably lose a bit. If you're avoiding, both parties lose. If you're compromising, both parties give and take and share the loss or the win. Does everybody understand this example? Could everybody take a picture of this and refer to it? Remember, manage and resolve conflicts like a pro. Conflict doesn't happen to be a scary eight letter word. Conflict is a word that people need to learn how to deal with. Addressing conflict is how we strengthen our relationships and express our expectations in relation to those of others. By understanding the five conflict re resolution strategies that I've taught you here today and applying the skills that make them effective, you, yes, Amal, you, Evelyn, yes, Evelyn, you, Alexander, and all of you will know exactly when to avoid conflict and when to address it. Your relationships with your customers, co-workers, prospective employers, persons, or business partners, partners will be better. Okay, so does anybody have any questions about anything that I've spoken about today in our BIS talk today? Does anybody have any questions? Come on, I don't like talking for three hours and then no one asks me any questions. Wake up, will you? Ask me questions. Come on. Alexander, you're always smiling, man. I know you can ask me 20 questions, but I want everybody else to talk. Elu, Elu, good afternoon, Mr. Elu. Tell me, what's your question today? Good afternoon. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I want to you explain again between the, somebody who is uh, hostile and aggressive in terms of uh, business or in an organization. Well, hostility is aggressiveness. Hostility is aggressiveness, all right? So let me go back to my PowerPoint. Just bear with me for a moment, please. Just bear with me for a moment, please. Yes. Okay, so uh, callousness, we know. Grandiosity, we know. Okay, suspicion, we know. Mil uh, we 
where did we go here? Here it is here. Um, just one moment. Okay, number two is hostility. The, we've mislabeled that. I do it. Well. Um, so hostility involves an unrealistic set. Hold on. Where? Why is this happening? Where, where have we gone wrong here? Just one moment, please. Okay, here it is. Hostility. Hostility is when you're violent, forceful, or aggressive. So hostility is aggressiveness. So if you're violent or forceful, if you raise your voice, you're basically being aggressive. Okay? A good example of when aggressiveness might be appropriate is when it could and when it could back uh, sorry. A good example of when aggressiveness might be appropriate and when it could backfire. As I said, if I'm a teacher or a lecturer and a student doesn't agree with my formula, I can actually argue and tell him it's right based on fact, scientific fact, research, or proven business methodology. But if I use the same level of stubbornness and aggressiveness and hostility at home with my wife, my daughter, my family, or my boss, then it would be negative and it would fail. So hostility is aggressiveness because to be hostile, you're being aggressive. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Are you sure? Does that answer your question? Yes. All right, so give me an example of how the relationship between you and your client could turn hostile. Can you give me an example? Uh, for, for example, sorry. Give me an example of how a relationship between you and a client or you and your girlfriend could become hostile. <laughs> For example, uh, if we just have some mistakes and without allowing, I just use a force on shouting. I'll give you an example, Ali. You, you're too nice. So if you accuse your girlfriend of going out behind your back with another boyfriend, even that you have no evidence, and slap her on the face and walk away, two things can happen. You'll be basically lost your friendship with her forever. Two, she might report you to the police for assault because of your aggression without actually proving fact. Would that give you a simple example? Yes. Do you agree with that example or not? No, I agree with that example. All right. Now let's try another example, Alu, in business. Let's talk this. So you are the supplier and you, I am your customer, all right? And I asked you to deliver 2,000 tons of sugar to me by the beginning of the month because my factory has to produce 20,000 jars of jam, strawberry jam. Now, if I don't get the sugar, my strawberries will go to waste, right? On the day yes. of my delivery, you call me and say, I'm not going to supply the sugar and I'm not going to return your money. And if you decide to complain about me or sue me, I will make sure I never supply you again. Now, you're being aggressive. You're becoming hostile, right? Now, what is the danger of that hostility? One, your customer will find another supplier, will sue you, will blog on social media and ruin your reputation because of your hostility, right? So was hostility the correct way or should you have tried to reach a compromise with your customer? Which one do you think would have been better? To try and compromise with the customer. Thank you very much. So do you now understand what I mean by hostility, which is the equal of aggressiveness? Yes, I understand. Thank you, Avu. Thank you. It's good to see you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've all learned about conflict resolution. I hope Amal has learned about how she should handle business situations moving in the future. And I hope Amal has got to take notes. So the next time she wants to go into business, she'll remember the element of risk. Okay. From me to all of you, um, I want you all to take these biz talks into your real life. I want you to use them in everyday real life 
in your study and in your business experience. Conflict resolution is something that you need not only in finding a girlfriend, finding a wife, finding a husband. Conflict resolution is something you're gonna face every day, whether it's when you go to the supermarket, to your Korean hairstylist, um, to buy a dress, buy a pair of shoes, with your mother and father when they're being unrealistic or unfair. Compromise is something you need to learn to live with. Avoidance is something you need to avoid. Sometimes avoidance is good, but it's not something you want to do on a regular basis. You need to be able to measure when to be collaborative, when to be co cooperative or collaborate, um, collaborative, when to be compromising, when to be avoiding or when to be competitive. Do you all understand that? You need to judge the situations. With your mother and father, should you be competitive? No, you should be collaborative, all right? You should be collaborative in order so you see their views and they understand your views, all right? So if you talk about your ex-boyfriend who's been cheating on you, should you be collaborative? No. Should you be Competitive? Well, yeah, I dump him and find another boyfriend. Okay, there's plenty of boys out there. There's plenty of fish in the ocean. Should you use an avoiding attitude to him? Yes, you definitely don't want to talk to him again because you can no longer trust him. So you always need to measure the right way to deal with conflict. Do not tread down the wrong road and become aggressive and then never be able to forgive yourself because you've ruined a long time relationship with a customer or a friend as Evelyn gave an example earlier. Does anybody want to ask me any questions before I go? Yes, Jonah, go ahead, Jonah. Can you unmute? Coming to you, Alexander, hold on. Yes, Jonah, go ahead. Hi, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. What's your question? Uh, it's not about the question, sir. It's about the topic today. Yeah. So I just want to hear. Yeah. Because all of the the topic here now. Yeah. Is already happened here because I working here in Kuwait as as a uh, helper at the same time in the yeah. food business of my employer. Yeah. So all what you discuss. I all experience here in my co-workers. So and you find that today's good. lesson helped you? Yes, sir. So much. Good girl. Excellent. You're welcome, Joan. I look forward to seeing you at the next Miss Talk. Thank you, Joan. Good afternoon. Yes. Okay. Would anybody else like to talk to me? All right. I've got three more. All right. I'll talk to three more and then I have to say good night. I have another lecture. All right. Let's go to the next person here. Read me note 10S. Good evening, sir. Go ahead. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, hi. How can yes, I help okay. you? Go ahead. Oh, okay, Good, okay. thank you. Uh, yeah, um, let, may you please leave your contact so that we keep in touch with up. So Absolutely. That get my, my administrative yeah. assistant, my co host, my boss here today will give you my number very shortly. Um, Mr. Govin, yeah. could you put my plus 65822 number in the chat box now? Could everybody go to the chat box and make sure you got my WhatsApp number? It should be plus six five eight double two five triple two zero. When communicating with me, please state your name in full. State BizTalk59 and the name of today's BizTalk and then ask the question. Please allow me up to three working days to reply. All right, let's go on. Okay, um, okay the next... Two, it's plus, plus, six, plus six five. It's plus six five, is it? Sorry, um, uh, can you put this BizTalk talk number in the chat box, please, um, okay. Mr. Govin? Govin will type the chat, the BizTalk talk in the number. I think it's fifty nine actually. But Govin, will, Govin, what BizTalk talk are we doing today? Is it fifty nine? Thank you, thank you. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Govin will type it in the chat box. Mr. Govin, can you type the BizTalk talk number in the chat box, please? It's BizTalk59. You can copy the name. Okay, thank you. All right, um, let me go to the next hand up. Okay, Alexandre, go ahead, sir. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for this talk today. So uh, I just want to say thank you. And I just want to say to Happy New Year to all of you guys. Uh, and I'm very glad and uh, it's a big pleasure for me to learn with us. 
with you. So thank you very much for it. So happy new year, everyone. Thank you. Happy new year to all. Thank you, Alexandre. I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, uh, where are we gone? Okay, okay, I've got three more ladies here. Okay, Amal, young Amal, open your microphone, young Amal. Tell me, Amal. Sir, yeah. Uh, sir, I learned a lot from this class and the topics that you shared uh, today was very helpful for me. Some of them I experienced it like hostility, dominance, and yeah. compromising, yeah. and other collaboration. I, I recently had a big trouble collaborating with my dad because he always dominates me in a lot of things and it's not something regarding dad and daughter issues like something beyond that so I was just wondering like uh I would learn from these topics and I would learn to collaborate better fantastic um I want you to do that and I want you to read the matrix with um, yes, all the competencies and what they come up with. And, and um, thank you for the knowledge, sir. No, I'm a, you don't have to thank me. I'm an academic. It's my job, ma'am. Uh, it's a pleasure thank teaching. Thank you for helping, sir. And I thank want to you. see you grow. And the more you grow and the more successful you become, that what gives me satisfaction. That motivates thank me you, to sir. get up tomorrow and teach again. Amal, if you want a copy of the PowerPoint, just drop me a WhatsApp and I'll send you the full set. All right? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yes, you. Sir. It's my thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Good afternoon, ma'am. Okay, let me go. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I can only talk to four more people. I have another lecture coming up, but um, next person in this queue is Ivana. Go ahead, Ivana. How can I help you? Are you there, Ivana? Yeah, hi, Ivana. Uh, hi, good evening, Mr. Yeah. Wally. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Wally, uh, can I have example people in closeness? Hello, closeness. Hello, closeness. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, it's when somebody basically, when somebody's trying to show you that they're better than you, that they're more powerful than you, that they're more important than you. All right. Okay. So let me give you an example. Okay. Let me give you an example. You have, you have, you go out with a bunch of girls. All right. A bunch of girls in your country. You're all going out to a nightclub, right? And then suddenly this girl comes up to you. She says, Ivana, don't sit with us. You're too poor to be with us. We're rich. You come from a poor family. Go away. That would be an example. All right. Do you understand that? Yes or no? Open your microphone. You yes, I'm answering understand. and you already yeah. switched me off. Yeah. Have, yes, I understand. Have you ever experienced that? Yes. I meet a lot of kind people. And how, <laughs> how, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? I have to say. <laughs> well, I've showed you how to deal with it. And I want you to learn from it, okay? If somebody yeah. treats you that way, Ivana, you have to make a decision. You either avoid and walk away or you try to compromise. Do you understand that? Yeah, I know. All right, good stuff. Excellent, thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, um, I've got two more people here. I'm sorry, I'm running against the schedule. Okay, uh, Lisa, go ahead. Are you there, Lisa? Hi, Lisa, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, yeah. good evening. Yeah. Hi, welcome to today's class. How can I help you? Yeah, uh, today I'm uh, so uh, happy to hear you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wally, to share a lot of uh, uh, general uh, for me. Thank you so much. And it's happy my pleasure. It's my pleasure. I look forward to seeing you in the next Biz Talk. Remember, we have our leadership series next week. It's a separate series presented by my boss, um, Mr. Benson Ma. I encourage you to join the leadership series. It's a totally different series. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lisa, for your Happy New Year wishes. Keep on studying hard, Lisa. I've got one last hand. Bear with me, please. Paul. Hi, Paul. Are you there, mate? Go ahead. I wasn't going to forget you, Paul. Rest assured. Go ahead, Paul. Good, good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Wally. I hope you're yeah. well. I'm well. I, I, I become motivated when I see inspiring people here on New Year's Eve. God bless you all. That's what makes my life worth living. Go ahead, Paul. How can I help you? So um, this topic is very interesting to learn. Unfortunately, I am at work, so I have to come in, come out of the class from time to time. I need your WhatsApp number so I can have a PDF copy. Yeah, absolutely. My co-host has put the WhatsApp number in the chat box. Um, could you repeat the WhatsApp number, please, uh, Mr. Govan, and the BizTalk name and number, please. I'll read out the number for you. It's plus six five eight 
5220. It's in the chat box now. And Mr. Govan will publish the Biz Talk name, which you should put in your WhatsApp chat. All right. I appreciate Thanks, Happy New Year. It's my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, from me, Wally Rada. I'm your facilitator and lecturer for BizTalk 59. It's been my absolute pleasure to talk to you today. I hope that what you've learned, you take away as examples and use them in real life. I do ask you to please, if you enjoy my BizTalk, to go to our Facebook, okay, go to our YouTube and give me the likes or thumbs up. We are on Facebook. We are on YouTube. Go there. Give me your thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, remember, if you want to be successful in life, the first thing you need to do is believe in yourself. The second thing you need to do is remember that learning is a lifelong journey. And the third thing you need to do is never give up. I repeat, never, forever, under whatever circumstances should you give up. Do you all understand that? Yes or no? I love you all. From me to you, from my family, my boss, from all of us here at Kingston International School and Empire Inc. Holdings Private Limited, Apex Cloud College, I wish you all a very happy new year. May the new year bring prosperity, good health to all. God bless you all. Mr. Govan, happy new year, my, my dear colleague. Good afternoon, all.